Hi everyone. Okay, today we're going to be doing a project in Scratch. Now, I'm not using my video today because I'm going to actually be using the video camera for something in Scratch. So this should all become clear when we start the project. Now, to find Scratch, all you need to do is either type Scratch into Google, and it's normally the first one that comes up, or find this website, scratch.mit.edu. Okay, this is the home page that appears when you first use it. Now, if you've already got an account, you can click on Sign In. This is trying to get me to sign in here. If you don't have an account, you can click on Join Scratch. Now, you don't have to have an account to use Scratch, but if you want to save your work and look at it again, then you will need an account. It's free to join. You click on Join Scratch, and at this point, you choose your username and a password. Make sure the username is not your real name for eSafety. And make sure the password is one that you can remember. Now, when you click on Next, it will ask you for your parent or carer's email address. So at this point, you're going to need a bit of help. So your parent or carer will need to enter their email address. They'll get an email saying, do you want to join Scratch? And they can say yes, and you're good to go. Okay, I'm going to go back to the Scratch logo here. Okay, once you've joined and you're all signed in, what you need to click on is Create. Every time you start a brand new project, it looks like this. You've got your code blocks down the side and your cat sprite sitting on the stage. This bit's called the stage. You normally also get the tutorials box. I'm going to close this, but if after doing today's video you fancy doing some more scratch ideas, you'll notice at the top bar here, the tutorials button takes you to all sorts of different videos that tells you how to make all these different things. Lots of them we've done in school. I'm going to talk you through one today. Now I'm going to be using the camera on my laptop to come up with a fun effect using Scratch. Now we've got all our usual ones down the side, motion blocks, looks blocks, sound blocks etc. However I want video sensing and I can't see anything that says video sensing. I need an extension block. So go down to the bottom left, the, click the blue extension button, it takes you to this page. You can add all sorts of extensions from music, pen, micro bit, but we want this one, video sensing. Now, when I click on it, if it works, it should do two things. First, I'll appear over here in the stage. And secondly, down here, you'll see we've got some new blocks called video sensing, which gives us these four new instructions. Now, I'm going to keep the cat this time, but I'm gonna move him over here where I'm not touching him, okay? Now that's quite important. Right, the first thing we're going to do is pull down this one. When video, mo video motion is greater than 10. Now this goes on a scale from zero to 100. Zero, not moving, 100, really, 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 really fast. Now, I'm not gonna be moving that fast on the video, so I am going to probably leave it at about 10. What is going to happen is, if the cat senses some video motion, as in me stroking the cat, I want it to do something. And what do cats do? If I click on sound, they go meow. So I'm going to pull down, play sound, meow until done, and snap it. Can you see the shadow? Snap it. There we go. Onto the uh, video motion block. So now let's see if it's going to work. cat. <laughs> if I changed this to 95, say, mm, I'd have to be moving, I think, quite a lot quicker for it to actually work. So I'm going to put mine back oh, to 10. It doesn't like that. Okay. Right, now pause the video do this to this stage, have a go, shush cat, have a go and see if you can get your cat to meow. When you've finished, press play and I'll show you what we're going to do next. 
Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you got your cat <coughs> oh, mewing. I'm going to get rid of that code now because it's annoying. But I still want to be keeping my video sensing blocks because we're going to learn how to make a fun game. Now, this time I am going to delete the cat. So come down here to where we've got our sprite, press on the dustbin and off he goes. Okay, I'm going to play a new game and I want to play Pop the Balloon. So I'm going to come down to choose a sprite. I'm going to click on the choose a sprite icon. And one of the first ones here, oh, here we go, balloon. Okay, here's my balloon. I'm going to move him over here. Now, I want my balloon to appear on the screen and wait there until I touch it, pop, disappear, and come back somewhere else. Okay, so start with an event block. When the flag is clicked, I would like the balloon to show itself, which will be in the looks block. And then I'm going to add the video sensing. When the video motion, that's me moving, is greater than 10, we want the balloon to pop. So let's see if it's got a good sound. Yep, sure enough, play the sound pop. Then we want it to disappear. So let's go back to looks and say hide. Now, however, we want a new balloon to appear. So let's make the balloon wait for one second, move to a completely new random position and then show itself again. Don't worry if you're not going as fast as this. You can stop the video, rewind and play it again. Okay, let's see if this will work so far. I'm going to press play. See what happens. It should, oh, reappear oh, in different places. Okay, it's working. Oh, if it lands on top of you, which it will sometimes because you're telling it to go to a random place, then it will just automatically pop because it will see you moving. Now this game's a bit more fun if you do it from over here. Okay, stop that for now. Now, if you've got that working so far, then let's turn it into a fun game to play. We already know we've got to pop them, but what if you had to pop as many as you could in 30 seconds? This is where our variables come in. I'm going to put that down here so it stops popping. <laughs> okay, so let's go down to orange and click on variables. We need to create two variables. First, I'm going to create one called score, because we want to get a point every time we pop a balloon. Okay, so when the flag is clicked, we want to set our score to zero. So at the moment it says my variable, so we use the drop down menu to find the one we just made called score. Okay, now when the video motion hits the balloon, it plays pop, it hides, it waits and it reappears. So when it says pop and hides, actually that's when we want our score to go up by one. So I'm now going to select change my variable to one drop down and again change the score. So this time, let's see if it works so far. I'll press play. My score is zero. Ah, did you see my score go up? <laughs> ah, okay, press stop. Stop it popping. Okay, so we've got the score, which is great but we want to add a little bit of tension. So we definitely need a countdown timer. So we go back to variables and we make another variable, this one called timer. Okay, so when the flag is clicked, we want to set the time to, well, 
This is a countdown timer. So select timer. Let's start it at 30 seconds and see how many balloons you can get in 30 seconds. So set timer to zero. Now you're going to need a forever block. We want the timer to go down by one every second. So you're going to need a wait one second block and then in variables a change timer by not one because that will go up to 31. We want minus one because we want to go down to 29. Now you know what I want it to stop actually when it gets to zero. So actually I don't think I do want a forever block. I'm going to change that and I'm going to choose instead this one. Repeat until. I want this to keep repeating going down and down until it equals zero. So at this point to fit inside this tiny little shape I need an operator block. So I go to green and I find the equals operator block and it magically fits in here. I want to carry on the time going down until it equals zero. So I'm going to change that 50 to a zero. And we want the timer to equal zero. So I go back to variables, grab the word timer and put that inside here. Again, if this is going quite fast, remember you can pause the video, rewind and watch again to catch up. OK, so now I should have put my timer over here, my timer should start ticking down from 30 as soon as I press play and my score should go back to zero ready to play the game. Let's see if it works. Head back over here, press stop and get ready. Here we go. My time is ticking down. Oop. And I'm getting points every time I get a balloon. OK, it's working. Brilliant. I've still got 15 seconds, etc, etc. Now, how do we make our game even more exciting? Well, if it was me, I'd definitely add some game music. So I'm going to go over to sound or oh, sounds at the top here. We've got code, costumes and sounds. I'm going to click on sounds. At the moment, it's just playing this popping effect for the balloon. So I'm going to go down to the bottom and choose a sound. There's thousands to choose from, but I want the one which is called loops. So going on the top, animals, effects, here's loops. All of these ones play a longer tune. Sorts. I normally end up choosing the one called video game because I just like it. Okay, so now I've got two sounds selected, pop and video game. So if I go back to code, I can say when the flag is clicked, this time I do want a forever block, go to my sound and say play sound, video game, until done. And it will loop that over and over again throughout my game. OK, now I could say, right, stop the game using a stop all block when the time gets to zero. And that should stop the game. But what if I wanted to add a game over? OK, for this we need to create our own sprite. So we're going to go down to the sprite, but instead of clicking on choose a sprite, we're going to choose paint a sprite. It takes me to this page. I'm going to choose T for text. I always end up choosing marker, so I like the way it looks. And then click on the screen and start typing. Game over. At the moment it's really small. You can see it's appeared on the screen here, it's really tiny. So I'm going to drag it out, move it around until it's where I want it to be. And I actually, I think I'm going to change the colour, if I can, to something a bit brighter. Oh yeah, you can see that a lot more easily. OK, now I'm going to go back to code because actually we only want this to pop up right at the end. So the code I need, when the flag is clicked, I don't actually want it to show itself at all. So I'm going to say when the flag is clicked, I'm going to suggest hide. 
Now, how does it know when to show itself? Well, we go back to the balloon and the timer. So before we stop all, in fact, I could probably get rid of that altogether, I need to broadcast a message, broadcast message one and wait. So the time has gone down to zero. It sends a message to the game over sprite. So if I click on the sprite, I can say, when I receive message one, and it's going to show itself. I think it could show itself for probably two seconds or so. Let's go for two seconds. And then it can stop the game. We'll do stop all. And it should stop the music and it should stop everything. I don't think it stops the video sensing. I think that carries on as long as you're moving. Okay, well, let's see if our game over works. So if I press play, my score should go to zero, my timer should go to 30, the music should start, and hopefully the game over won't be there. Let's have a look. was because, if you remember, I took that off to stop it being annoying <laughs> and I forgot to put it back on. There you go. Debugging for you. OK, so now we've got a cool game that started. The only thing we haven't got is some instructions at the beginning to tell us what to do, what the point of the game is. So I'm going to create one more sprite by painting using the same text. This time I'm going to say collect or oh, let's say pop. Pop the balloons okay I need to try and make that a bit bigger Ooh, not that big okay and again this one we don't want it to be there for the entire game we want it to pop up at the beginning so when the flags clicked I think it should show itself oh looks block show but only probably for two seconds at the beginning wait two seconds and then we want it to disappear and actually we don't want to see that again so that's all the code it's going to need hide okay i think i'm probably there if you wanted the balloons and the sound to also wait until it stops saying pop the balloons you could add in a quick wait two seconds and a Wait two seconds before it starts. Shall we try it? Now remember you can click this one to make it full screen. Let's see if it works. Oh, let's add that back on or it won't work. Here we go. The balloon! thing you might like to do and that is in looks if you want your balloon to look as if it's lots of different balloons rather than same one every time you can add this cunning little one which says change color effect by 25 and stick it in before it appears again and if I show you I'm just going to disconnect the music if I show you pop the balloons every time it reappears it should start to change Color. Okay, right, let's stop that. Okay, remember at any point you can rewind this video, 
watch it again and see if you can catch up. Now the last thing to do, if you have signed in, I will sign in now so I can show you how to save. It will come up with untitled at the top. So give it your name, so I'll call it Video Sensing Balloons or something like that. And you should be able to, if I move that up here, you'll see it says save now. Click save and it will save it into your account. Now, to find it, you find the name of your account, you click down and you look in my stuff and all the things you've ever made will all be saved in there. OK. So have a go. Enjoy yourselves. And I can't wait to see what different projects you managed to make. Okay, enjoy.